uh, we'll continue the what we started before our about our father Abraham. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay, so um, last time we talked about uh, the calling of Abraham and we talked about the three things that uh, were accompanying him everywhere he went, which were the altar, um, the promise and the tabernacle. And then in verse nine in Genesis 12, it says, then Abraham set out and continued toward Negev, which is like south, you know, towards the south of Canaan. And then in verse 10, it says, now there was a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. Now, of course, we are all familiar with this story. You know, the story of Abraham that during the famine, he left the land of Canaan and he went to Egypt. And um, we always hear about this being one of the mistakes of our father Abraham, although some actually say that um, you know, he didn't really do anything wrong because, um, I mean, there was a famine, he didn't have food, and he was trying to to find a way out of this, like anyone would. Um, but we'll see that th there was one little mistake, and maybe for, for Abraham, it's a big mistake, and maybe for someone else, uh, people would do that without noticing. But for someone that had the faith of Abraham, uh, maybe that was considered uh, like a little lack of faith. So the, the first thing that we notice here is that when he went to Egypt, he didn't ask God. So what happened next was, as he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know that you, that what a beautiful woman you are, when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be sp spared because of you. So also here, some people say that Abraham was only thinking about himself, was not thinking about Sarai and what would happen to her, but he was only thinking about uh, saving himself from death. Um, but again, here we see that Abraham resorted to something uh, logic, something um, that is you know, any man would think of to protect himself. But he did not ask God. He didn't leave the, the whole thing in the hands of God. But also we want to add here that leaving things in the hand of God does not mean that I don't do anything. And sometimes it may mean that I, I have nothing to do, but sometimes there is a role that I have to do. And for him seeking food, for example, this is not wrong. This is his job. This is what he needed to do. But again, um, to, to be afraid to be killed because of Sarah and to have Sarah say that she is his sister, although she was his stepsister, but you know, also uh, this is half of the truth and half of the truth is not the whole truth. So it's, um, th this is the, the mistake here. When Abraham came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And she was taken into his palace. He treated Abraham well for her sake and Abraham acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. We see here that uh, actually, because of his going to Egypt, uh, or of him going to Egypt, he actually uh, gained a lot of wealth in Egypt. Although we see that his faith was not, you know, at his, like, in, not in top shape, not, not the usual that we expect from Abraham. But here, you know, we learn like a couple of really nice things. First, that Abraham is a human. And anyone who lived with God and all the great men of faith and the great men uh, the great saintly men and women that lived with God, all of them had their mistakes and all of them uh, were weak at times. And that gives us hope. Yeah, you know, if, if the Bible did not mention to us the mistakes of, of the people who lived with God, it would have been really hard for us. And yeah, imagine that the Bible never mentioned any mistake about Abraham or Isaac or Moses or David 
then we would feel that, you know, whenever I, I make a mistake, and all of us do, then I am not fit to be with God. And this is, of course, not the case, because God deals with all of us, although we are sinners. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abraham's wife, Sarai. And, you know, this is the most beautiful part here. Uh, we don't see Abraham talking to God, and we don't see Abraham asking God's help. And we don't see Abraham maybe, um, you know, doing the right thing. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that God is going to leave him. You know, and, and this is a misconception that we all have sometimes. That many times I feel, you know, this is happening to me because I did this. And this is happening to me because I didn't do that. And we forget that God is a father. He is a loving father. He is not a policeman. Uh, we, we many, many times have this idea about God that he is policing us. But in fact, it's the opposite. Here... God did not tell Abraham, okay, you know, uh, you wanted to have it your way, so, so deal with it. You know, he didn't tell him that. Abraham is still his son, and he's still his beloved son. And God remembers uh, the good things that any one of us would do. And, you know, in the time of trouble, he remembers those offerings that we offer him and those like, you know, times when we did anything for his sake and, and not even that, he just remembers that we are weak and we need his help. So this is the beautiful part. Abraham, um, although he wasn't perfect in what he did, but God, you know, picked up what he lacked. He couldn't protect himself and he couldn't protect Sarah. And you know what, at this point, if he lost Sarah, it would have been really bad. If he lost Sarah because Pharaoh took her and he lost her as a wife, it would have been something really bad for Abraham. But Abraham is, is the man of faith, is the one that God chose to, you know, to be the father of nations. And, and, and this nation is the nation that's gonna carry God's name to all the earth. So again, uh, this, tells us that God is not, uh, you know, looking at us like a policeman does, but he's looking at us as a father, as a loving father. So Pharaoh summoned Abram, uh, what have you done to me? He said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her to be my wife. Now then here's your wife, take her and go. So although God protected Abraham and, you know, he, he picked up where Abraham could not, like, do anything for himself. But at the same time, uh, he let Pharaoh rebuke Abraham. Um, he let him rebuke him just uh, to listen uh, from someone who is not even following God that he did something wrong. So, so Pharaoh told Abraham, like, what have you done to me? Uh, then Pharaoh gave orders about Abraham to, the, to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. So the, the summary of the story is Abraham was not perfect in, in what he did. Uh, but he did the, you know, the natural thing that anyone would do. But because he is Abraham, because he loves God, because he, he followed God, because he left his land and, and obeyed God's calling. God is protecting him, and not only protecting him, but he even let him leave Egypt with a lot of wealth, a lot of things that he acquired from Pharaoh in Egypt. And God showed Abraham that I am the one protecting you, even you know, from the hand of Pharaoh, even from the hand of anyone else. So it's a beautiful story that tells us that God loves us. No matter what we do, God loves us. And even if sometimes we are very weak, and even if sometimes we do things that are not right, that does not mean that God is going to forsake us. And, and God has a plan for, our, for the whole life. Um, and the, the most beautiful part is that yeah, God is, loves us no matter what we do. Not that he loves us because of what we do. 
and he doesn't love me when I'm good and then he doesn't love me when I fall but he loves me all the time فالتأمل عن هذا عن أبونا إبراهيم زي ما يعني تدينا نتكلم عن أبونا إبراهيم كم مرة اللي فاتوا وبنكمل تاني النهاردة قصته لما نزل مصر فبيقول إن كان في مجاعة في أرض كنعان يمكن في في الترجمة العربي بيقول إن حضر إبراهيم إلى أرض مصر فكلمة إن حضر دي بتمثل حتة انحدار روحي شوية أو حتة ضعف إيمان طبعا مش غلطة إبراهيم إن هو راح بلد تانية عشان يلاقي أكل لأن الطبيعي إن لو في مجاعة الناس هتسافر عشان تلاقي أكل في حتة تانية لكن الغلطة بتاعت إبراهيم يمكن كان فيه حاجتين أول حاجة إن هو ما سألش ربنا يروح فين يعني هو من الأول كان ماشي ورا ربنا لما ربنا قال له أخرج من أرضك ومن عشيرتك ومن بيت أبيك سمع الكلام وحتى وهو مش عارف هيروح فين وإبراهيم كان يعني أحلى رمز للطاعة وأحلى رمز للإيمان إن هو كان طاعته يعني إيميديت وكان ما بيسألش ربنا ليه أو إزاي أو شمعنا بس هنا في الوقت ده يعني في الوقت ده في وقت المجاعة هو نزل مصر ولما نزل مصر هو عارف إن صار مراته يعني كانت جميلة شكلها جميل فخاف إن كان المصريين مشهور عنهم إن هم كمان يعني ناس وسنين ما يعرفوش ربنا وممكن يبقى فيه في حياتهم حاجات غلط فكان يعني خايف إن يتأذي بسبب الموضوع ده فراح قال لسارة هي سارة كانت يعني ما هياش أخته من الأب والأم لكن أخت يعني هاف سيستر يعني ستاب سيستر فكان يعني قال لها يعني قولي إن أنت أختي ما تقوليش إن أنت مراتي عشان ما يقتلونيش بسبب ودي برضو في ناس بتاخدها على أبونا إبراهيم إن هو يعني فكر في نفسه وما فكرش في سارة إنها ممكن تتاخد منه وممكن واحد تاني يتجوزه لكن نشوف بقى يعني إيه اللي حصل إن إبراهيم راح مصر وفعلا سارة قالت كده إنها أخته وفعلا لقوا إنها امرأة جميلة فراحوا مدحوها عند فرعون وكانت يمكن العادة في وقت ده إن حاكم أو يعني بالذات فرعون أو لو واحد يعني ملك كبير إن هم يجيبوله يعني أي واحدة جميلة يلاقوها ف... فيضمها يعني للنساء بتوعه ففعلا عمل كده و... وإدى لإبراهيم هدايا كتير بسبب الموضوع ده بيقول إن إداله يعني خرا... خرفان و... وبقر وعبيد وحمير وكل حاجة ف... فإبراهيم اتغنى بسبب ال... ال... يعني نزولة مصر دي بس كان في مشكلة في مصر يعني ودي اللي كانت يعني حاجة مش كويسة إن إبراهيم نزل مصر إن مصر كانت دايما ولو إن دي يعني حصلت بعد إبراهيم بس عشان كده يعني بنقول إن إبراهيم ما سألش ربنا مصر كانت دايما رمز للعبودية يعني طبعا ده حصل بعد إبراهيم مش قبل إبراهيم إبراهيم ما يعرفش كده بس, بس مثلا بنلاقي في قصة إسحاق إن إسحاق لما حصل مجاعة يعني إسحاق ابن إبراهيم حصل نفس المجاعة أو يعني حاجة مشابهة وبرضه إسحاق ظهر إن هو فكر ينزل مصر فراح ربنا بقى مرادي ظهر له في حلم وقال له ما تنزلش مصر برغم إن هو إسحاق برضه وقع في نفس الغلطة بتاعت إبراهيم إن هو برضه قال على رفقة إنها أخته بس كانت في أرض تانية كانت في أرض الفلسطينية فبيقول في عدد 17 إن ربنا بقى تدخل يعني إبراهيم دلوقتي في موقف صعب قوي يعني تخيلوا كده لو واحد فيه مكان إبراهيم يقول أنا إيه اللي جابني هنا أدي صار تاخدت مني أنا غلطت أنا ما سألتش ربنا ممكن نقول أنا كذبت أو يعني خبيت الحقيقة لكن دي الحاجة الجميلة في القصة دي إن ربنا بيقول لنا يعني أنا بحبكو أيا كان الوضع يعني أنا, أنا بحبكو متوقع أن أنتوا تغلطوا مش متوقع أن أنتوا على طول تبقوا كويسين يعني دي الحاجة الجميلة في ربنا هو مش بيعملنا هو صحيح بيقول لنا وقال إبراهيم هنسمع الكلمة دي سر أمامي وأكون كاملا يعني هو عايزنا نبقى كاملين لكن هو عارف إن إحنا هيومن يعني عارف إن إحنا بشر وبنغلط ودي الحاجة الجميلة اللي في قصص الناس اللي عاشوا مع ربنا كلهم إن هم كلهم الإنجيل نسب لهم أخطاء يعني ما ما كسفش الكتاب ان هم يكتبوا اخطاء الناس اللي عاشوا مع ربنا والا كانت تبقى الحياه مع ربنا مستحيله لو اللي بيعيش مع ربنا بس هو اللي ما بيغلطش لكن هنا نشوف كمان ان ربنا مش بس يعني بيحب ابراهيم في في وقت ما كان كويس لكن حتى بيحبه في وقت ما كان ايمانه ضعف فراح هو دخل 
وبيقول ان هو ضرب بيت فرعون ب... ب... يعني امراض وراح فرعون يعني ظاهر ان هو يعني ربنا اعلن له السبب فراح فرعون جاب ابراهيم ووبخه وقال له انت ازاي ما تقوليش انها مراتك و... وراح خلى الناس يعني العبيد بتوعه ي... يقول يعني طلعوا ابراهيم بره مصر. لكن نشوف هنا ان ابراهيم طلع من غير خساير بالعكس طلع بارباح. يعني هو ما خسرش مراته، ما خسرش مثلا حياته زي ما كان خايف، ما ما تأذاش في مصر، بالعكس ده طلع بأملاك أكتر من لما من لما راح مصر. يعني ربنا اتدخل وحماه. صحيح سمع توبيخ من واحد وثني ويمكن ده برضه درس لي لكن في نفس الوقت ربنا يعني حمينا، ربنا في كل وقت يعني بيتدخل. ربنا في كل وقت بيتدخل وينقذنا. يمكن صحيح في وقت لو واحد يعني يعني سادد ودنه خالص ومش عايز يسمع يعني ممكن ربنا يسمح بحاجه كده عشان يفوقه لكن ده مش معناها ان ربنا يعني مستنينا نغلط عشان يعاقبنا يعني ده للاسف احيانا بيبقى تفكيرنا ان احنا بنفكر في ربنا ان ايه يعني عايزين نتقي شر ان انا يعني هعمل كده بس عشان يعني ربنا ما يعاقبنيش او انا مش عايز اعمل كده يعني هعمل مثلا حاجه بوزيتيف عشان يعني ار بي او هعمل حاجه ما اعملش حاجه نيجاتيف عشان اتقي شر لا الموضوع مش كده صحيح انا انا عايز ارضي ربنا في حياتي بس عايز ارضيه كاب يعني عايز ارضيه كاب بيحبني مش فكره ان انا عايز ارضيه عشان انا خايف ان هو ان هو يعاقبني وممكن يعني ممكن في انسان مثلا يكون بعيد عن ربنا يبتدي مثلا يفوق شويه عن طريق الخوف لكن مش معنى كده ان هو هيكمل حياته كلها وهو بقى خايف يعني تخيل واحد طول حياته خايف ان 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 ربنا هيضربه ربنا هيعاقبه ربنا هيعمل مش مش عارف ايه كذا دي ما تبقاش علاقه يعني ربنا يتبسط بيها يعني اذا كان هو ربنا قال لنا يعني لا اعود اسميكم عبيدا بل اسميكم احباء. يعني برغم ان احنا عبيد بس هو بيبص لنا كان احنا احباء ويبص لنا على ان احنا ولاده. فيا ريت نتعلم من قصه ابراهيم يعني قد ايه ان ربنا بيحبنا وقد ايه ان ربنا بيبص لحياتنا كده وعنده بلان ما هواش يعني بيبص على الحاجات الوحشه بس يعني خلينا نبص على ربنا الحلو اللي بيحبنا اللي عايز لينا حاجات كويسه. واللي عايز دايما يساعدنا لإلهنا المجد دائما ابدا امين. امم 